<sighs> well, today's the day, guys. So allow me to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Daniel, aka the Pop Culture Dude. I'm finally gonna make my movie review of Dear Evan Hansen. And if you haven't noticed, I made two trailer reactions showing my emotional and personal honest thoughts, my own opinions of why I'm excited that Dear Evan Hansen, the musical, is getting a movie adaptation, how much it impacts on my personal life on everything as a theater kid, as and through my love life, but also my pressures of social anxiety and finding the right type of people, even a little bit of some family drama. So I can understand that from the existence of Dear Evan Hansen. But before we start, I gotta give credit to AMC Theaters of giving me an early screen to go watch Dear Evan Hansen early like in Tuesday, September 21st, and I was lucky to watch it right away in a private screening. And I get to take my dad because I want to share my own father from why this Dear Evan Hansen has a personal connection with me and why it's the most human movie adaptation that I've seen that is based on a Tony Award winning musical. And one of the best parts that I enjoy about that screening is where I met this guy named Noah who has a very spot on cosplay of Evan Hansen. And the one thing I know for sure that both me and him had a great conversation about our like geekiness and our fanboy about knowing every knowledge about the Dear Evan Hansen musical, even facts about the movie before we even saw it just because we know about the existence of the production. But at the exact same time, he has experience over theaters and I was a theater kid too. And luckily, the theater production as a whole, like where I was in high school, introduced me to Dear Evan Hansen back in 2018. And I even have an ex-girlfriend back in the past where there's this one song and I will explain it in this review of how much it plays a big part of my love life as well, but also my personal life as well. But just like Evan himself in school, I do struggle on finding the right people who I'm just having some difficulty of which are the ones that I could connect with, but also be okay to be myself. And that's what I'm gonna explore about in this review. So before we start, this movie will have potential spoilers. So if you have not seen the movie at all, if you don't know anything about Dear Evan Hansen, um, I suggest you should go watch the movie right away because you definitely see this movie right away. Like I totally recommend it to you. But if you personally don't care or the fact that you just wanna know my thoughts, well, here's the thing. It's gonna be a super long review. So grab a snack, grab a drink, and grab some tissues because this is going to be a pretty big personal deep video that I'm going to share. So we're going to start in three, two, one. So when I saw my screening of Dear Evan Hansen, I was nervous but also ecstatic just because I'm glad that the story of Dear Evan Hansen shows this young adolescent senior in high school named Evan Hansen who often just writes like letters to himself over therapy and assignments just to express his mental thoughts just because he has issues of communicating with others just because he has a disability of, dare I say it, Asperger's. And guess what? I have not told you guys this, but I do have Asperger's myself too. So, yeah, that's a secret that I never get to tell. Like, some, like I can look at myself as Evan where he messed up his words or he often stutters or he just goes, it, 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 and then starts a little bit shaking and going anxious and possibly just mispronounce a word in a way. It's more like, yeah, sometimes that slips in my mind whenever I'm a kid. It comes and goes for me, but that's something I see myself in Evan. And speaking of Evan himself, before I get to talk about the characters and the plot, I'm just going to talk about the fact that Ben Platt, who really, truly is Evan Hansen himself, ever since he played the role on Broadway. And I have to give credit to his father, Mark Platt, who was the producer of this movie that convinced that Ben should play Evan. And I know everyone's gonna criticize, yeah, but he's a 27 year old guy. Why is he playing a young teenager? I mean, come on. Like how many young adult actors that we have to see playing high school teenagers and high school movies in Hollywood? Like, come on guys, it's something that we've already seen before. But for Ben, it doesn't matter the age, he still felt young to me, like it made me believe him as a young teen that was something that I've experienced similar to what he did. If you guys don't know what I'm saying, I'll definitely explain more about it in the context of the story. So often when Evan decided to write letters to him, he said like, Dear Evan Hansen, today's going to be an amazing day. Like he's trying to like present his expressional thoughts about how which he would do to like express and learning how to become better and gaining confidence whenever he needs to go to school. But luckily he has low self-esteem, self-doubts. And the first song, the song that definitely hits close home to me, but also 
probably you guys can relate to this song too. It's called Waving Through a Window, and it's basically a song that you try your best to be open in this huge crowd of people, and school is definitely the best example I can think of, is the fact that you're trying to find like a certain group, and you want to be a part of the crowd, but luckily, you just sometimes get a little bit too shy, and you just don't know what to say. Or maybe you do want to say hi, like, hey, uh, can I be friends? Uh, can I check out what you're doing? But they often ignore you, and then you just move on with your day. And then you eventually decide to become a loner, decide to go to cafeterias by yourself. And I just love that song that much. Like, the lyrics, like, Ben still got the same vocals that he has got from the Broadway musical, and he never failed to disappoint. Like, it was his Tony Award winning performance, and I think he's going to succeed it. Like, he deserves an Oscar nominations for the same role that he did on Broadway. Like, I was just getting straight to it. And even I was, I didn't sing the songs out loud, but I was lip singing it along where he just sings it. Uh, Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. I'm waving through a window. Can anybody see? Is anybody waving back at me? Like, I definitely felt the intention, but also his cry for, like, not for the sake of attention, like, hey, look at me, I just want to be loved. Like, no, it's the fact by saying, like, is there anyone that can actually get to understand me for who I am, for what I'm struggling with? And that's who Evan is, and that's why I can understand from it. And speaking of which, he has a broken arm, and in the movie, and even though it was implied in the musical, he broke his elbow from a tree, and guess what? So did I too, 11 years ago, but the difference is, I broke my elbow at like in a very young age. And speaking of which, um, there's this one character and his name is in the cast and it's Connor Murphy, which who is an outsider bully, kind of like Evan where he's an outsider, but he's like more on the negative pressure answer side. Like he often gets like a negative attitude and the fact that he doesn't care about anyone else. And the fact that he just has like no intentions of like not connecting to anyone, not his friends, not his family. And the fact that there's always drama around the Murphy family and Basically, the parents, Cynthia Murphy, who's played by Oscar nominee Amy Adams, who definitely does sing a number in this movie, and I will get to that later. I mean, she did sing Muppets and Enchanted, which is getting a sequel, but off topic aside, you definitely have like a father, but the difference is in the musical in the movie, Larry Murphy, who's the dad of Connor, and the musical is the biological dad, but in the movie is a stepfather, and they definitely get some implications of how he wanted to raise Connor like he was his own son in the movie version. And that was like one of the slight changes. Like some fans weren't okay with it, but it didn't bother me. And then one of the most important characters was Connor's sister, Zoe Murphy. In a way that she has like a self distance relationship just because Connor has bring nothing but negativity to Zoe's mindset that she couldn't remember anything positive around her whenever she's like with his misfitted troubled brother who has like the impossibility to not connect. And I can definitely see girls like Zoe that actually has experiences of troubles of drama with their own siblings. Like I've met girls like that before so I know what that's like from other people who experience like that. And the most beautiful art about Dear Evan Hansen is the people and the characters. Like, I talk about the Murphys, I talk about Evan, even Evan has a single mother. And the fact that he used to have a father, but sadly just move away from a U-Haul truck and often doesn't want to talk to him. I understand there's like young boys out there that has single parents. Like, most of them don't have fathers, but for me, luckily for me, I have a father but the one thing that is, that's different between me and Evan, but what that is one similarity that me and Evan has is we both had single parents or the fact that he doesn't have a dad, I don't have a mom anymore. No, it's not like the fact that she's dead or anything. It's the fact that due to the drama issues and when I lived through my life of abuse and pain for my mom, I decided to live with my dad. But for Evan, it's definitely different just because his dad decided to move away in a U-Haul truck and he has to take care of like be in the same household of his single mother who's played by Julianne Moore and there's a funny easter egg about Jurassic Park Arc 2 like in the arcade during the song Sincerely Me! Sincerely Me! Which I will talk about later in this review which I'm like, like hey she was in that movie so that was a, a nice little easter egg nod to that. But besides that, she plays Evan's mother 
Heidi Hansen, who's often a nurse who doesn't really get to spend time with her son, but luckily she encourages Evan just to make like these everything notes for himself for his assignment. But luckily when Connor was around, because like we said, he's nothing but just lost and just so much negativity in his mind. And Evan's the same way too, but it's more depressing while for Connor it's definitely more mean and aggressive. And don't get me wrong, sometimes I do have anger issues kind of like Connor in a way. And that was like one of the things that I was just scared to present and express whenever I'm socializing. It's not the fact where I'm often get into like mental nervous breakdowns like Evan does. Sometimes I just don't want to release my mean attitude spirit of kind of like what Connor does. But luckily, in the context of the story, Evan often writes letters to himself where he's not having a good day in school after singing Waving Through a Window, which is one of the most iconic songs from the movie is the fact where he decides to write a letter that he has feelings for Zoe Murphy and the fact and we can relate to that as well especially for me from Evan is the fact that sometimes we just want to express feelings to like a girl or at least someone that we have a crush on high school or anywhere else but you just can't express the feelings because possibly that significant other and from my perspective and from Evan's perspective one of the girl doesn't share the same feelings which that could be disappointing. That's where Evan decides to like write letters to himself, but decided to print it out and send it to his therapist in class. But luckily when Connor decided to go out and check about the note about his sister Zoe, that's where he take it seriously, push Evan away. And after the waving through a window like ceremony, there's the fact where Evan gets to know these two characters who are basically like Evan's close friends. Like he's not completely alone. He has like two close friends. Jared, who's kind of a nerd, a D like basically a dweeb, a dork, whatever you want to call him. He's like definitely like a comic relief side character, but at the exact same time, Evan tries to convince him like to sign his cast, but he's like, I'm your family friend, I will not sign for you. But for Connor, who never was a friend to Evan either way, the fact that he shouted at him and yelled at him and technically wanted to talk to Connor's sister Zoe, but Evan just got too anxious and just hides in the bathroom and has to take medication pills just to calm from his disability, but also his anxiety down. And he gets to mental breakdowns like that, and I just can't help but to feel sorry for him. And technically, there's this other character named Alana Beck, who in the musical has a smaller role, but in the movie, they gave her a much bigger expanded role. She even has a new song called Anonymous Ones, and it definitely shows the example that, uh, like, basically, Alana is the president of a student class. And the one thing that's really interesting is, like, Evan thinks that she's one of the coolest girls in school, but in reality, she does struggle to, like, similar, like, mental ha health habits to, like, what Evan does. And that's one of the things that they built from their friendship on throughout the film, and I definitely appreciate that. And then, luckily, um, there are a couple of songs that are cut from the movie. So, the ones of Waving Through a Window and Technically, there's, like, four songs, like, Anybody Have a Map, which are supposed to be sung by Evan's mother, Heidi, and also Zoe's mom, Cynthia, which are played by Julianne Moore and Amy Adams, where they're supposed to be singing about their introductions before Evans, but the movie goes straight to Waving Through a Window, so we can get to Evans' perspective, just because he's the main character of the movie, and basically the story of the musical as a whole, but they at least reference that in Trombones, and they even reference Good For You, which is a song that where Evan is getting close connected to the Murphy family, because after when Connor read the note that wasn't supposed to be intentional to Connor or Zoe or anything, it's a letter that Evan writes himself. But once when Connor decided to read the letter, he committed himself suicide. Yeah, it's a pretty deep, dark topic stuff, guys. And then luckily, when Connor's parents are eventually called over the next day, when Evan decided to call him over, they think that Connor was the one that write the letter from Evan just because they put Dear Evan Hansen, which they're assuming that Connor write the letter to Evan, but in reality, that letter was mostly written for himself. And luckily, he wanted to tell his parents to believe that Connor was never friends, but once when he wrote the cast, like, let's pretend that we're friends, but in reality, they weren't. Like, basically, they were just acquaintances, but just like, you know, they couldn't attract from their interactions with each other since Connor was mostly negative. And then luckily, like, his parents were definitely worried, thinking, like, Connor did not, like, have any friends in the world, and we're thinking that you're the only one. And Evan, since he struggles to talk and communicate, he wants to tell the truth, like, I'm sorry, this is a mistake, like, he didn't wrote this. But once when the parents find out, I was like, wait, I see that our son's name's in the cast, then maybe you could be the friend. And then Evan, basically, like, as nice as he's trying to be, um, even though he's trying to make up these stories to believe that he and Connor were really friends, but in reality, they weren't, to help connect the family 
family, like the Murphy family, just to be a little bit more like satisfying and a little bit more relief that Connor actually had a friend and Evan never have any close friends until he met Jared, who's the nerdy guy, and then Alana, who's definitely more of the class president student of the school that was in charge in like most of the programs. And I was thinking that one of these days that Evan can actually be open about himself, and he did. Like the song for forever of All I See is Sky for forever he was invited for dinner table for the murphys and luckily zoe is still like distance and trying to remind her parents like what is the one good positive memory that we have with my brother because i don't remember anything of that so she really despises her brother's existence even though he's dead because he committed himself suicide so evan like even though he wishes to tell the truth that he was never friends in the first place but now that it's also gifted and cursed for him is the fact that he has to tell the story of for forever and i cried at that song the reason why i cried is because even though it's not real but it's a wholesome story that what if they were friends and to me it reminds me like you know a brotherly bond love whenever you have like with your brother or like a best friend that you used to have and i was just like sobbing tears like <laughs> like i was so fully invested and even my dad sat across me by saying he has a wonderful voice and i'm like indeed and i was emotionally touched by that and basically that's where evan decided to tell the story about how do you broke your arm kid fall off from a tree and technically when he slipped off and break the arm Evan, like, the truth is no one helped him to pick him up, but he made up the story where Connor picks him up instead because there was no one to help. And like we said, I relate to that story too of breaking my elbow from a tree, but as we move on, as I was getting a little bit teary of the Four Forever song, which was sing so beautifully well by Penn. And then next thing you know, just to make this movie not that much sad, thanks to Jared's comedic timing, since he is the comic relief best friend to Evan, is the fact that we get to a very weird song, but it's a silly song, it's Sincerely Me, where Evan has to pretend that Connor, like, basically make these email messages, and it gets super fun and energetic, there's a little bit of uh, dirty jokes in a way, but the audience laugh at it, but it just makes us to crack a smile, and it's so catchy. Na -na -na -na, it takes a re and vengeance sincerely me like i was getting to the beats of the song like how the actors ben platt nick dadondi and colton ryan they did really a good job of choreographing the scene throughout as they blocked the scene so that was a fun segment but besides all the fun stuff that happens about evan trying to like makes believe that evan and connor were friends just to make fake emails to each other by jared's help this is where we get to Zoe, which she doesn't want to believe that. Why are they doing so much nice things for her dead brother? Like, for, to her, it just doesn't make any sense. All that she can remember is the trouble, but also the mental pain that she's been given by her brother, which she sings Requiem. And that's a very heartbreaking song for us as a whole. So there's so much complexity in the song. They're not meant to sell out the brand. They're meant to tell the story and the emotional pain that these characters have suffered through. And Requiem was definitely one of them by the Murphy families as they all sing it together. And then next thing you know, they decided to change like a couple other songs. So I already told you about Anybody Had a Map was cut, Good For You was cut, but they were used as instrumental like in the March band just to make us Dear Evan Hansen fans by saying like, hey, we get that reference. But in a way, kind of disappointed that it's not in it. Maybe it's because the director did not have time to put them in. Or maybe Julianne Moore couldn't raise the pitch of what Evan's mom sings. Because those songs in the musical, Evan's mom sings them. But I guess they didn't have the time for them. But we will explain about Evan's mom later on. So once when Evan's mom is eventually off at work and basically just ditching out for her, no Taco Tuesday with her son, and technically Evan has to find a way just to be more connected, and he connected with the Murphy family because that's the only time that they actually view Evan as like if they were like his own son, and technically he decides to connect with Zoe about that Evan actually has deep heart feelings for Zoe, like he has a crush on her, but technically um, he has to use in the words of Connor and try to make Zoe feel better to think of a more positive perspective on her brother rather than the negative too much. And that's why that song that he tries to sing, like, If I could tell her, tell her everything I see. If I could tell her how she's everything to me. And this part of the lyrics. But we're a million worlds apart. And I don't know how I would even start. Like, basically, he's trying to use Connor's words, but in reality, it's Evan trying to express his emotional but also 
romantic feelings that he has for Zoe, and it shows it throughout the film, including in the montage. And like I said, I couldn't relate better than that too, because I, like most of us, struggle to. I have the feelings for this girl, but I don't know what to say. I want to say I like her, but what if she says no? So I totally understand for what he's been through. So there's a lot of like me too moments, including that one scene where Evan sees Zoe like dancing like in prom or basically in a homecoming dance and he's all alone. It reminded me of a scene of Steven Chabonsky's, the director of this movie, of his first two movies, Perks of Being a Wallflower and basically Wander as well, which I did sell that movie in theaters. It's great movies that features young male protagonists as teenagers or young adolescents that struggle to try to find their place in school just because they're different from everyone else. And I think he truly succeeded in Dear Evan Hansen. And for a couple of songs, there's another one called Disappear, where Colton's, like, memories are trying to, like, remind Evan to, like, not forget Connor's existence, even though, um, Alana Beck is basically trying to, like, make a program called the Connor Murphy Project just to make donations for the honor of his death and his loss. And then technically, besides that, Evan, who basically doesn't know how to communicate properly, he has to stand up for the speech since he has a big part of making up the story that he and Connor were friends, but in reality, they weren't. He decided to sing like one of the most iconic songs that was heavily marketed on the movie. And this song is a love letter for all of you who either you feel ignored, like broken downhill in your life. You Will Be Found is definitely a cure to that that will lift up your happiness. Like, Evan was, like, having a breakdown. Like, he was just shaking, and the fact that he just didn't know how to communicate, and then he couldn't stop breathing. And everyone started laughing at him, and then they started to, like, record cell phones and just decided to use it as a joke. And, like I said, it just made me feel sorry about this guy because he felt so nervous. But after when he got the encouragement from the Murphy family, he started to sing the song, Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you. Because when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. And once when that song keeps on going, once again, tearing up so much just because it just proves that now everyone is starting to connect with the song. And when I mean everyone, basically anyone who recorded Evan's speech for the Connor Murphy Project, it got a bunch of views, Evan was becoming famous, and then everyone everyone on social media was speaking their voice of how much they were inspired by the connor murphy story but how much how evan knows what it's like to be a loner but at the exact same time there's other people who failed the same pain from what both evan and connor did and that's one of the things i truly appreciate in this wide beautiful social media montage that is done so well and even Zoe herself like forgives evan and doesn't want to be too harsh on him and the fact that she feels thankful that she made her like feel hold again from evan's positive attentions and doing everything just to connect the good sign and honor her brother and that was very emotionally touching and like i said that's pure human nature when it comes to anyone from your family or your friends or just anyone just to connect with you like whenever you just feel broken down there's always going to be that one person or that group of people that will be there by your side whenever you just feel alone on your own or the ones that you can count on and then the next thing you know after when alana decided to talk about the anonymous ones where she just talks about how she is distinctly different from all the pressure that she has about some other people may not understand for what we go through even if they have different personalities different type of hobbies that they do in school or whatever in real life and i really think that they try to make very distinct type of students and young adolescents like very realistically from how they are represented in high school and i couldn't done it thankful for myself for dear evan hansen and then there's this one song that once when Zoe decided to visit Evan's home, okay, this is going to be like in a personal note where she sings this one song where she actually has feelings for Evan. And then technically, besides that, Evan already had a crush on her like back then before. But for this romantic elements that I do appreciate is the fact the song Only Us. And I get emotional every time I listen to that because... I used to have an ex-girlfriend named Brooke, which we did met in class in musical theater for the first time, and we tried to do like a audition show just to when to be a part of America's Got Talent, and we decided to audition for Only Us by Dear Evan Hansen that features Evan Zoe just confessing 
their love for each other and it's done so beautifully well in the montage of Evan and Zoe with their dates from homecoming proms to roller coasters to the carousel and how much that they like each other not just because they're famous or anything is the fact that they can see similar issues from what they've gone through but they love each other from who they are in the inside and that's what's so beautiful about that song and luckily enough I started to cry just because when I was singing that song to my own first girlfriend where I start seeing the lyrics like in the movie where Evan sings but if you really see me if you like me for me and nothing else like when I sing those lyrics in real life in front of my first ex-girlfriend Brooke Varney is the fact that I wasn't acting like it sure it was in the context of the musical number and the story but I was being genuinely real about sharing my own heartfelt emotions and when Evan and Zoe start to sing the final lyrics of the world falls away and it's only us where they decided to share a smooch for each other it reminded me when me and my first girlfriend decided to share a smooch and then in real life she eventually dumped me and decided to date some other guys and another and another all just because we had drama issues about her previous exes and the fact that I decided to like not show up to like cause any arguments so I won't cause like any drama so Evan goes through a similar issue of not telling like everyone the honest truth just because he doesn't want everyone to see like a bad example or a bad reputation or like other people seem differently because I feel the same way whenever I decide to share like my anger issues and the fact that <sighs> just don't want people to see the worst of me and there's one song about Evan singing about words fail so once when Evan's mom was invited to the house where the Murphy family wants to donate their money since they're wealthy and rich and after when they want to send the money to Evan's mom is the fact that she doesn't want to give the money in way and she doesn't like the fact that Evan is connecting to the Murphy family just because it's spending less time with her mom and they once had an argument to each other like Evan and his mom aside about like you were like the one thing that was good ever happened to me Evan and then technically he just said they felt more like a real family to me in real life guys I had arguments like that with when I used to be raised by my mom in the past and that's one of the reasons why that I kind of like have some rough elements in my childhood when it comes to my mom in a way so that argument reminded me just something that was <sighs> too close to home so I just couldn't handle it anymore <sighs> I'm sorry guys I just couldn't handle it when I was just seeing that scene for the first time so luckily it's starting to get a little bit more emotional like the fact that once next thing you know that when Evan decided to find like Alana Beck in the library and she started to get curious about why did Evan did not show up to the Connor Murphy project just because he confessed his feelings to Zoe in a way from the song Only Us. And since that song has a deep personal connection between both of them, but also to me in real life, um, like ever since that song is like the definitive love song for me that I got my first relationship with, I'm not sure if I want to sing it with another girl again because once when I think about that song, when both of the characters, Evan and Zoe, sing it on screen, it's like, yeah. I miss those moments. That should have been me in the homecoming dance, just like when Evan Zoe had. <sighs> but I never had the chance. I never did. But hopefully someday I will. <laughs> but that aside, we decided to move on where Evan decided to release the truth to Alana about the truth that Evan and Connor decided to see those email messages were fake and Evan decided to roll for himself just to believe their friendship. And then he promises Alana to not post it but luckily she did just to release the truth just because it made the whole Connor Murphy project pointless and then everyone I mean everyone on social media decides to like pressure they decide to like read negative comments about the Murphy parents like what type of horrible parents they would be like look what they've done like their son committed themselves suicide and you're telling me he was never friends with Evan at all and then luckily when Evan decided to realize about this on social media Zoe comes home frustrated and then both of her parents eventually start arguing about Connor like it's all his fault that we didn't raise him by in the way that we didn't like help him in and then Evan decided to speak the ugly truth no matter how bad it is he decided to tell the truth like that letter wasn't written from Connor it was written by me because it was done for my assignments and I didn't mean for this to happen to like any of you guys and there's this one song words fail and personal reason I'm gonna put on this after when I had my breakup with my ex-girlfriend 
I decided to beat myself up the next day in school, put black mascara on, wear a COVID mask that wrote words like anxiety, stress, pain, pressure, all over it. And then luckily there was other students that were just like afraid of me. The reason why they were just afraid is because they thought I was going to kill someone, but in reality they didn't. And then when my ex-girlfriend decided to look at me, she started crying. Like, she just realized that she just made my emotions feel bad after the breakup. And the song that I played was Words Fail. And in the context of the story of the musical where Evan just feel like he made a mistake about all these lies like he's not trying to hurt anyone's feelings and he's not trying to like anyone see the worst of him so the parts where he sings i let for let them see the worst of me i was just sobbing in <laughs> i was just sobbing in the theater like so hard like the reason why i was is because I understand what he's gone through because sometimes in the past I used to make makeup stories about this one person in my life that was something meaningful but it was never real just because just try to be empathetic and that's what Evan tries to reach but in reality he didn't mean to like change everyone like the way they think and then Evan decided to run away alone and the story about him breaking his arm from the tree he didn't like slip off on purpose he broke his arm on purpose. He did it on purpose just because he just couldn't handle the pain and he decided to like hurt himself in a way. And it just made me feel so sorry for him just because he thinks that he was like gonna end his life in a way. And then everyone decided to like, when the Murphy family, Zoe, Larry, and Cynthia decided to like notice about Evan, about the truth about he was never friends with Connor, the fact that the Connor Murphy project was just mostly a setup and basically he didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings. And then where he says that, I'd rather pretend that I'm something better than these broken parts. Pretend that I'm something than this mess that I am. Like everyone was crying in the theater, including me too, where I was just sobbing like next to my dad. Just because like I used to be a mess where I just have problems with my own mental emotions and the fact that I just don't know like how to fix things. And the last part of the lyrics where Evan like, where he sings, all I do is run. So how do I step in, step into the sun? Like he questions that to himself. Like how can he fix all this? Like he can't change anything for what happened back then. But the one thing that he can change is the conclusions for what he could do. Like he's at his lowest point and he's like in his downfall. And that's why Words Fail was such a meaningful song in the story, but meaningful to me where I had my breakdown in school where I completely destroyed myself. But luckily, I did recover myself, all thanks to Dear Evan Hansen and some other movies that actually saved my life, which I might talk about it someday in the future, but just to focus on Dear Evan Hansen, when Evan come back home to his ma, other Heidi, about the story and everything that he talked about Connor was not real. And then technically, Evan just apologized the time that he eventually feels sorry that he didn't mean those negative words about to his mom. And then one of the most tear-jerking songs in the movie is So Big and So Small. It's where Heidi, Evan's mom, decides to sing about a song about the story where Evan's dad decided to leave him from a U-Haul truck just because the relationship wasn't going so well. I started tearing up just because I had to experience with like two split parents. And then after that she just says, and the house is so big and I feel so small. And I just couldn't tear up so much just because she even sings that what if Evan concerns like his mom is going to be gone, but she promises to still stick with Evan and love him no matter what. And that's like something that's so emotional just because like Evan never had a dad in his life to share corny jokes or baseball gloves and his mom wasn't like barely there but now she had the time to do and she decides to like share that pain share that love to Evan and in a way it's more like yeah like I may not have a mother with me but I have a father that's still next to me like no matter what and that's why I'm just saying like no matter like how big the house is sometimes like some parents can like feel small and empty sometimes when they have to take care of their child by themselves 
but they won't feel completely like sadness and despair just because they at least have that child in a way. Like Evan wishes to have a dad like what Zoe and Connor had. Like Connor had like a distance relationship with his own parents, but Evan tried to connect with Larry, which was Zoe's dad. And then technically he's something like to break in a glove. That song was not in the movie where he teaches Evan about how to break a glove in, like saying like it's the hard way, but it's the right way. It's a great song that dads can connect, but that's not in the movie, sadly, but it was just implied, which was enough. And then luckily when the truth was out, Evan decided to like record an Instagram video after when he and his mom decided to hug it out and I just couldn't stand the emotional things like it really broke me down like in the theater and then the next thing you know Evan decided to speak the truth by saying like he's not accepting for forgiveness <laughs> and the fact that <laughs> the fact that he just wants to say the honest truth and he doesn't want to be called sorry and the fact that he just want to be honest about everything and then the next day in school, he decided to read books about himself, like The Giver, Ready Player One. And then everyone at lunch was, like, staring at him. And then the one thing that they changed from the musical is, from the movie, they give a, like, they give Evan, like, a redemption arc. And then a new song, instead of just a reprise of For Forever, they decide to show a file of Connor's song, which he decided to sing a little closer. And it was, like, one of his music-talented songs before he passed away, where Evan tries to find evidence. And Evan sees Zoe like almost every day in school and basically it's kind of the same way where Evan and Zoe were not dating anymore. It's the same way how me and my ex see each other like we don't talk we just look at each other and then we move on. So I couldn't like relate to Evan as much as I did when it comes to like his relationship with his families or trying to like hide the dark side of himself and his love life and his interactions with people in school because he used to be loved by so many people just because of his speech in the Connor Murphy project but now all of that's been turned around since the truth is out now some people just don't know what to think of Evan once when it's finally been revealed out as he posted to himself and then after listening to the emotional music video that Connor was singing that was dedicated to the family, Evan decided to visit the park that where he broke his arm and technically tells the makeup story that he and Connor used to hang out there. Now he finally goes there for the first time and decides to talk to Zoe one last time. And then they both talk to each other about what he wanted to do for the future. And Evan says this where he's definitely almost as accurate as me. He's like, after graduating high school, I'd rather just... Uh, take a year off of not doing anything, probably just do, get a job, and then take some community colleges, and I'm like, dude, that's exactly what I did too. Like, I take a year off from high school and then to community college later on so I can just focus on my own hobbies, and it's like, you have no idea how much I can relate to this character so much just because I see so many things inside of him from the physical pain, mental pain, and the drama and the love that he has from family and friends and all around, getting noticed on social media, all of it. And I really think Evan Henson, like, <laughs> enough. And that's why I just feel so glad about this musical. It's the fact that... <laughs> It's the fact that I just feel grateful that we actually just have a movie that's like something that I could be open like my heart and soul out to what Evan has to go through and throughout the story and now the audience himself can sympathize with all these characters from Zoe to Connor to Jared to Alana to even the adults, the parents, all of that. And I just feel grateful that everyone just like burst into tears of emotion because that's what the story wants to make you feel. Get invested to these characters about sharing their pain. And this ending just leads off like on a happy note and it made me tear up. Like it really did. Like basically Evan said one iconic quote from the musical where he's like, Dear Evan Hansen, today is going to be a good day because today you're at least you and that's enough. And he decided to make that as a final message to himself. And then it shows a beautiful wide shot view at the very end that shows the farm. And one of my favorite ways to end a movie is looking at the bright blue sky. And it reminds me of the song, All I see is sky for forever. Like it reminded me of that from the original musical. And at the end of the day, the movie end on a positive high note. Like, he couldn't be back with Zoe again just because the parents don't want Evan to be in trouble about it, but Evan speak the truth either way. So overall, 
Dear Evan Hansen is the most emotionally moving musical ever. My dad teared up. Everyone else in the theater teared up. Even I did. I cried seven times. I had tissues everywhere around my seat where I just couldn't stop sobbing just because I was just so emotionally invested like everything that was going on. And I'm glad that even the audience themselves can actually get into the emotions of the context of the scenes and the songs and everything else. And that's why Dear Evan Hansen means so much to me. It's truly a miracle that finally it's a story and a movie musical adaptation that I can present and actually I can open about my personal life and share it to you guys in the video that I'm reviewing for you guys and guess what I encourage you guys like whenever you feel like deep emotional pain I encourage you to make more personal videos like this if you cry cry if you have to it's part of human nature and the fact that is if you want to express your emotions if you feel alone outside in the world just do anything to help and one of the smartest things I love about Dear Evan Hansen that I did for a PSA at the end credits, it just shows this suicide hotline phone number. Like, whenever you just feel suicidal or depressed, where you just don't have, like, you feel have a purpose in life, have a phone call with them. Have a talk with your family. Have a talk with your friends. Someone you trust. Go to church. I don't care. Just anything, because you have a purpose in life. You don't deserve to be forgotten. You are loved by the people that are important in your life. And that's what Dear Evan Hansen reminded me of. It's the true human nature. The fact that all of us are flawed. We're all struggled. That the fact that we have vulnerability, both mentally and physically and all that, from how much it beats us down to our knees. But we still remain optimistic. Step into the sun and not step out of it. And the fact that even when you're broken down on the ground, when you have something to carry you, you will be found by someone and by someone that will care and lift you up and always be there by your side and whenever you have to let go about the honesty that you have no matter if it's ugly bad or anything too distasteful you just gotta be true because sometimes it could be something not everyone likes to hear but it seems like it's the right human choice to express and you could just do better because it's never too late to make a difference to make a change unless you do it yourself you have the opportunity to make a change for any of your mistakes in your life. That's something that I learned for myself. Like Evan rise back up slowly for what he needs to be fixed and just learn how to stay true to himself. And that's enough. That's enough. And that's why I love about Dear Evan Hansen. And that's why I long for the days for all of these small independent movies that features a great filmmaker and this great award winning cast that really dives deep and cares so much about the source material but also presenting all of these message themes around the movie just to connect with you, the viewer who's watching this and just gotta know that everything's gonna be okay and you just gotta be fine with that. So. And all other things that Dear Evan Hansen is a masterpiece in my book. I don't care about the negative reviews. I personally don't care. And if I'm going to encourage you guys, so as I said before, just call the phone lines if you feel like you need someone to talk to. And the fact that you just feel like you need someone to understand you, just to let you know you're not alone and you got anyone in your life that can help you out because you don't deserve to have like any negativity in your life. You just need someone just to look out for you in a way and just be honest about yourself like don't hide away that's what dear Evan Hansen showed me like now I can finally just share my stories share my pain all that just because everyone in the story did and I couldn't thank it enough so I'm gonna say to you guys kindly if you don't care about this movie whatever then you're probably just wasting your time watching this but for those who do care I'm gonna say this kindly that please watch this movie as soon as possible because it meant to a lot of social outcast people, a lot like me. And the fact that one of the most important things about this movie is it really opens dives deep to what we young adolescents struggle to when it comes to like school and everything else and everything that we just had to like relate to in a way. And the fact that it proves that none of us are not alone and it's not. And the fact that everything will have like a good everything and a high note unless you do something just to stick with. And that's one of the good things I love about Dear Evan Hansen. So I encourage you to go see the movie. I really do. Like do that for a favor. Do that for me. Do that for the people at Universal. Do that for the people here. As much as I love blockbusters, I sometimes want to focus on small grounded human stories. Like one of these days, after a while I was watching Dear Evan Hansen, sometimes I feel like I want to like tell a story, write a story, or be a part of a story about high school teenage dramas, and that's something I would like to do someday. I don't know, but 
it's an amazing dream or an idea I can thought of, but I couldn't think Dear Evan Hansen enough, and sorry for the emotional moment, guys. It's I'm just happy that this movie exists, and I'm glad that it's open to the general audience and how you guys can see that how much this musical means a lot to people everywhere that adore it like me but also for casual people this is such an interesting human story that you can follow too so please go watch Dear Evan Hansen in theaters as you can because you will get emotionally invested in the story if you do care about or at least relate to what these people has gone through so that's it for my honest review, guys. I probably might make another Dear Evan Hansen video because I feel good about releasing all the truth out, everything I love about the movie, my personal connections with it, and I'm glad you guys can sit down through, and I hope that you have a chance to re-watch the movie or just go watch the movie yourself if you haven't seen it yet. And I gotta say is, thank you guys for watching. Sincerely me, Daniel Matamoros, a.k.a. The Pop Culture Dude, signing off.